Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about what to do when your standard echo views fail. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the modified subcostal and the right ventricular outflow tract velocity time integral, or the RVOT VTI. So I think it's safe to say, you know, if you're watching this video, you love ultrasound. And it's something that we've really honed in on our skills and view it as a superpower, especially when we're taking care of really critically ill patients to get that rapid information. However, what happens when you lose that superpower? So this can happen for a variety of reasons, especially with echocardiography. So if the patient is critically ill, have a larger body habitus, mechanically ventilated, sternotomy, the list goes on. There's many things that can affect our echo views. But never fear, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret and some ways to circumvent some of these issues that we might face with echocardiography. This talk is based off of a really great article. I highly recommend that you read it. It's called Point of Care Echo and the Difficult to Image Patient in the ICU. And they go over a lot of different uh, issues and uh, creative ways to circumnavigate those issues. But we're gonna talk specifically about the modified subcostal and the RVOT VTI. I'm gonna briefly uh, cover the topic of velocity time integral and introduce this in case you aren't familiar. So VTI is a way to uh, estimate cardiac output. So I think a lot of us are familiar with the left ventricular outflow tract velocity time integral, and that's where you place those pulse wave Dopplers at the left ventricular outflow tract. However, it does really require that great apical five chamber view, which can be really challenging in some of these critically ill patients. The RVOT VTI, on the other hand, you place that pulse wave Doppler at the right ventricular outflow tract, but you can perform it in the subcostal view um, or the parasternal view. Uh, normal for the LVOT VTI is gonna be about greater than 18 centimeters, and for the RVOT VTI, normal is gonna be about greater than 14 centimeters. So uh, this is just a quick uh, diagram. I know it's a little bit busy, um, but just kind of showing that the uh, LVOT VTI and RVOT VTI, the blood flow through those uh, valves is essentially proportional. Um, and so the variation is just coming from the uh, tract cross-sectional area. So the RVOT uh, is a little bit larger than the LVOT. Um, so that's a little bit of a difference um, in the VTIs, but that stroke volume through those valves is about the same. So why is this topic important? Well, the RVOT VTI and the LVOT VTI, like we talked about, are proportional. And the VTI really helps you differentiate etiology of shock, especially when combined with a fluid assessment. And then it's a repeatable measurement to assess your intervention. So you can do it again after you give fluids or give some kind of uh, treatment to see how the patient is doing and if, if your interventions are working. This is really just to drive home this point uh, that the VTI is really one of the best things that we have compared to a lot of the other uh, methods that we've been taught, such as CVP, which is kind of at the very far right of the screen, whereas VTI is at the very far left and it has kind of the best properties in terms of sensitivity and specificity. So this is really our goal here. This is a schematic of what we're looking for. So we're looking at the right atrium, the right ventricle, the pulmonic valve, and then the pulmonary artery. And that's our right ventricular outflow tract. So I'm gonna play a video here uh, showing how to obtain this view. So start out with our normal subcostal view that we're used to, and then by rotating your probe about 60 to 90 degrees counterclockwise, you can get the, the view that we're looking for of the RBOT. And we'll label this here on the next slide. So we're going at the level of the aortic valve. We have our left atrium, our right atrium, right ventricle, and then our pulmonary artery, and then at the level of the aortic valve, which is gonna be in the center. We're gonna place that pulse wave Doppler at the right ventricular outflow tract, and then the machine is going to give you this number. We're gonna trace the area under the curve, or it might just do it automatically depending on what machine you have. So in this patient, the RVOT VTI is 16, which we said was normal. So there actually has been a study validating this, uh, and they actually showed that the RVOT VTI obtained in the subcostal view is moderately consistent with the LVOT VTI. So it's something that uh, has been studied and we can use. Our take home point here is that the modified subcostal short view is really crucial, especially when other echo views fail and are challenging or unavailable. And the RVOT VTI is a reliable tool to measure and monitor hemodynamics.